Hi, I'm Melke Valovirta and this video has been asked a lot. How to play classic normal cheers by Ozzy Osbourne. So, the tuning is E flat, half step down to E and then the E string is dropped down one whole step. So it's drop D tuning but in drop D flat. So in a way it's drop D flat tuning or drop C sharp, however you want to think of that. Okay, the gear I'm using now is my old Tokai Les Paul designed by Mr. Wild at 2005. And this is the guitar that my signature ESPs are based on. Then it goes to my pedal board, Super Overdrive, Ford and Zool, noise gate after that to get rid of the hiss. Then the Marshall Jason 800 223, Zach Wild, signature head, soundtrack React IR, my whatever it was, impulse response from Jens Bulgren. Link in the description if you wanna purchase that, you get a discount, it's my affiliate link. Would appreciate. Then into Steinberg audio interface and I'm recording this to Cubase, you can probably see the green. There. Okay, so that was uh, the gear. And this lesson is, well, I listened to the song, I played this many times, for example, with Crazy Train. I put links in the description, there's a couple of live videos of us. One of them features my old friend Alexi. Bless him. So, and I met Zach when he signed this, he also signed this, and we were supposed to have a small chat like, you know, Thank you, great, nice to meet you. But we actually ended up talking and I had this guitar with me. So he played with this and he showed me some of the licks. Because obviously I, you know, wanted to know how do you play this and that. And he was kind enough to show. And this was one of the songs he showed me, how, how to play it. So this is a kind of, well, first-hand information. Well, second-hand is kind because it's coming from me. But anyways, so, <laughs> okay, so the... the he uses slide. I couldn't find my slide anywhere. You know, there's those in-between licks. That's a slide. But I'm gonna play it with my ring finger, because that's what I usually use to play slide, or ring finger, to kind of emulate that. But anyway, the riffs. Starts with the classic bass, bass, open D, D, D pedal point, bass, bass lick. And then, then comes the, these, there's this strange slide things, you know, there. But then when the actual, uh, Riff starts, it's like... So, let me go this slowly. I'm gonna show this, not actually to pin it, then I have a slide. So it's basically a diet, C to D, using D and G strings. Now this fast light. So you hardly hear the C. And then it's in D major, the, the lick. So. This kind of again an inversion diet of, of a C chord. And then. Again, slide from D to F, D to F, and then from D to G, inversion, you know, this, this is G, but inversion is the fifth, is the lowest. And then this long slide, which sounds a little bit stupid, you know, not having a slide. Long slide, slide stupid without a slide. So that's on the 13th fret. B and E strings. So, once more. That's the intro of Lightly. Then, the song kicks in, then comes the classic. Pinch harmonic lick. So, it's really simple. You want 
want to do those little slides there. And then the pinch harmonic. You could play it, but you don't get the power. So I always do bends if possible, finger ring wise, and especially is long these bends from low strings and pinches by using all three fingers. So ring finger and then I'm you know giving the power and the vibration. It's, it's a full whole step bend. I think the ringing notes are actually C and D because it's pinch harmony. How I do pinch harmony you pick with your pick and with the side of your thumb same time normally so you can get pinch harmonics happening anywhere that's that's it's just that so pick with your hopefully this focuses with your thumb side of your thumb and pick simultaneously <laughs> Like that. Okay, oh my drive was at zero. Increase the drive from the overdrive a little bit. That's that. And then the same similar lick comes with a slide. Same course. To play just a bit different. So first open. Like that. Cool. Those are the, the verse leaks. Then the chorus leak. There's two ways to play that. None of them isn't wrong. <laughs> By the way, Zach plays it because I actually played it before. He showed me how to play it. I play it like this. Which is the correct notes, correct chords. But, because the keyboard are playing these chords where he's having the D as a pedal point. So, Zach is doing the same. So, it's actually do going like this. So D and then the E, so he takes B, which is the fifth chord of the E, e power chord. And then D here, D here, he takes C here, which is the fifth of F power chord. This is just more like, whoa, so it goes. And sometimes, you know, it really depends on your taste, whether you want to fall mute with the two lower strings or just with the low, low D string. That, you know, that's just a matter of taste. I think it's more powerful when you use both E and A strings. Okay, and then after this it goes to B. B flat, power chord, and then slide from F to G. One note like, and then thrill, you know, from B flat to C. And then the ending is kind of the same. On the album it's not there, but he, he plays that many times live. And then it's E and F. On the album I think it's, it's kind of like slide, like from, I think it's from B 
and then from B to E and then from C to F. From, yeah, where was I? Yeah, slide from, but I've heard him play a lot like. Like that, so it's E and F and then again this one is, is there, but uh, live, I'm not sure if he's played or maybe something else. You know, that's... I think a little bit cooler. And the calls, it's a, again a D pedal point lick. It's a little sharp. So, D pedal point, D, C, and you could play again this, but he it's slide to D, which you can do with the open string. Like you could do it. But it, it's and here instead of it's a B flat inversion. So and again a little bit wide right out, so you know. That's that. And on the album there's like four guitars and with the you know Yamaha SPX90 symphonic chorus pad, so it's it sounds huge. So yeah, there's he's like quite quite troubled. Well, did the guitars four times, two times left, two times right, and then blend it together and added mix the sound mixer, mixer added the SPX90, which makes it like this huge lush big chorusy sound. But yeah, by the way, if you want to know how to actually get that sound and how, how, how they did that, I, I've done a video of that where I, I'm using a SPX90 Symphonic plugin, so I'll, I'll put a link in the, in the description, probably something, somewhere over there, if you want to check that out more in detail about the sound, or the tone, the sound comes from the hands, but you know. Okay, and then comes the, the C part, it's the piano part, and then the, the solo has like two parts, it's the, the mellow part and the you know, blues part, they have different chord changes behind. So the mellow part, it's, it's real simple, it's D, C, B flat, G. That's, let's play with the piano and bass. So, so it's interesting, he uses like major and minor modes, which I do a lot too. So it starts on the major, like and then it moves into minor. Listen. So it, he blends minor and major, and this is the bends and, and the vibrato and, and the timing is, is really, really cool. So, so that's a whole step bend. Yeah, that's, that's important, not, not like that. And he goes to minor. Back to major. This is really important. The first bend. So first it's one whole step, then it's one and a half step. Yeah, cool. And then there's this kick, like, I think he, 
what happened there is the, the B string accidentally got under his fingers. I, this is, has happened to me too on, on studio recordings, but it's very hard to replicate. It's kind of like... But there's that one, you know, you, you hear it. So, once more the, the whole thing. And then again, major. There. <laughs> really cool. Then, then comes the, the blues part, which is basically blue scale what he uses. And, and the, the ending is, is pentatonics and, and a few arpeggios. So the rhythm, can't remember, but the chords are bass, it's three chords, it's like F, G and D. Something like that. Okay, let, let me go through it, it fast. Not fast, but slow. <laughs> the, the ending was... I will get back to that. Basic first pentatonic scale. But he uses the added flat fifth, which makes it a blue scale. So, classic licks. And this is, you know, many times guitar players, when they do solos in studios, sometimes they're fully composed, sometimes totally improvised, sometimes both. And I, I do that a lot, that lot too. The, so, for example, on this solo, I'm pretty sure that the mellow part, that was composed because it kind of follows the overall melody. And then this, these blues parts, because I mean, you really can't play a blues with a feel if you compose that. It has to, you just have to, you know, wail it. And I've seen him play live and on DVDs, the solo, and it's different every time, these blues licks. And then the ending is clearly composed, because that follows the chord pattern with pentatonics. But anyway, on the album it's kind of like this, but you could do basically like your interpretation. At least that's how I've always done when I played it live, like <laughs> Just stay on that first box, box and use the the flatted fifth, the blues note. But on the album, it's it's kind of like slowly. So there's this, you know, double stops. Which, which are really cool. So, you know, so, so that's, I think it's really important to play these kind of lip, licks from your heart. You know, improvise, just wail it. Learn the scale and then, then do your thing. That's my recommendation. That's what I've always done. And then the ending, this is really cool. This is what I love about the early Zach Wild, because it was this phrasing, these bendings, half step, whole step, pre bends, and not just million miles an hour with basic pentatonics. So it's like... So he does the same. And just bending. So first it's one whole step bend from G vibrato and then pre-bend. Or he stays there. And it's kind of like... But you don't really hear this... this uh, D note there, it's kind of like, like funky. So 
So slowly. Half step. Full step. Half step. Full step. And then instead of. Half step. <laughs> really cool. And then, then the outro solo, it, it, it's just first pentatonic box with, you know, E and B strings, second, third, and then arpeggio. So. Like that. If I play it slowly. And it's important to have the pulse, so it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, not one, two, one, two. Listen to the difference. If I play first, one, two, three, one, two, three. There's this groove, but if I play one, two, one, two. Same notes, but how you create the pulse where you highlight the, that's a sign of a great, good player that you know you have a you just don't do like static stuff but you have a rhythm so one two three one two three and it's just alternate picking down up down up down up down up Quite simple when you when you got the got the techniques. And then this is kind of because it goes. Chord structures F G A C D F G A and then C uh, B B flat. It's kind of like arpeggio B flat. And then it's a uh, C and then the last you know bend like again using the middle finger as a support so we get the wide wide bottle. That was the solo. <laughs> Wasn't a bit long explanation. Then the ending, what's cool in there, the riff, the chorus riff turns around. <laughs> so I guess basic chorus. <laughs> Same notes, but you divide it differently between in in the bars. So the first is like do di do di do di. The outro is do di do di do di do di do di do di. So the original, the the previous outro. That's like that. Awesome song. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like, please thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and so on. Until next time, take care. Bye.